Our President Mohamed Buhari has met with the presidential candidate of the All Progressives Congress, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, on Wednesday night. The meeting between both was behind closed doors, and it was not clear what was discussed. But sources in the presidency say both men discussed the ongoing presidential campaign, as well as the APC's strategy to clinch victory at the polls. The meeting came shortly after a statement was released on behalf of the president, saying he is committed to campaigning for Ashuaju, Tinubu, and other APC candidates. The president, who is the chairman of the APC Presidential Campaign Council, was at the official flag of, of the campaign in Jos, Plateau State. And since then, the campaign has moved around the country, holding town hall meetings, political rallies, as well as other strategic consultations. President Buhari's statement on his, his readiness to campaign for the party with full energy and conviction, will also counter criticisms from opposing political parties that he has not been publicly seen attending his party's presidential rallies and campaigns after he flagged it off in just. Meanwhile, the presidential candidate of the opposition, PDP Atiku Abubakar, was in Casino State, where he assured party supporters that there will be an, impro an improvement in living standards and security if he's elected president, Dr. Latif Yusuf has more in this report. The PDP presidential candidate Atiku Abubakar arrives in company of members of the campaign council and other contestants at the venue of the rally. The PDP candidate promised the gathering that he had plans to address insecurity, education and the economy. <laughs> Other members of the party leadership also promised him in supporters that the general election in 2023 will provide a turnaround for good in the nation. Our youths are prepared to work because it is your future that Atiku Abaka wants to secure. Our women, you must be prepared to work because with Atiku Abaka, your children... When Alaji Atiku Abaka takes over as the president, Three major things I want to talk about. He will assure you of the rest. Number one, insecurity. The two major political parties in Nigeria have a strong base in Katsuna and are actively mobilizing support from the electorates. Abdul Latif Yusuf, TVC News, Katsuna. And in a bid to minimize electoral violence in 2023, a non-governmental organization has launched a digital platform to report violence in Kwara State in order to ensure prompt action by security personnel. Brian Malege reports. Electoral violence is one of the major challenges of the Nigerian electoral process. In the run-up to the elections, some offices of the Independent National Electoral Commission have already been attacked. This is why this non-governmental organization called this stakeholders meeting. In order to curb violence before, during and after election, as our organization is technological driven, we need to come one up with an e-platform named the next election, where people can actually make reports of violence before, during and during election, in order to make the electoral process credible. The organization has launched a digital platform where citizens can report electoral violence in Quara State and such reports can be sent to security operatives for prompt action. www.nestelection.ng So when they get there, they click on submit, uh, submit the report. So when they click on submit the report, it's going to bring a form for them to fill, like the local government, uh, the ward units. They have to upload picture. I, I write a short description about the, the, uh, the violence and they, 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 they submit. Stakeholders, including officials of Heineck, Religious leaders, security operatives and the media emphasize the need for all to work together to ensure a violent-free 2023 general election. So all these activities conducted by the political parties before the actual election, you know, if the political parties did not play, give fair play to their subjects, to their followers, definitely are going to have problems. And this will lead to what? It will lead to crisis. Having a violent free election too also marks the credibility of any election. So regardless of whatever the uh, security agency may have had in plan, I think INEC as well should have their own uh, blueprint. The problem I have with election security, 
has to do with uh, motivation, adequate motivation of uh, officers. The 2023 general elections would hold in just a little over two months, and Nigerians are hopeful that necessary machineries will be put in motion to ensure violent free polls. Ibrahim Alege, TVC News, Ilorin. And out to Edo State, where Governor Godwin Obaseki has reiterated his commitment to actualize the smooth takeoff of a world class edifice that will be a center of research for repatriated artifacts. He gave the assurance while on tour of the Edo Museum of West Africa at Emowa, the Emowa site with the German Minister of State for Culture and the Media, Claudia Roth, in Benin. Paul Ezewa was there. Since 1897 invasion that led to the cutting away of the Bini artifacts, there have been efforts to see to its return. Here is the German delegation led by the Minister for Culture and Media, Claudio Road, and was conducted around the site of the Edo Museum for West African Arts, MOA, by the Governor. Because Edo people are still very creative. So the same people who created these world-class pieces 500 years ago, it's the same blood that flows in their veins today. Many of them are expressing themselves in different art forms and different media. But there is nothing institutionalized. There is no infrastructure to support that. So a facility like this will be vast you know, infrastructure, which will be second to none on the continent. At the end of the inspection tour, the delegation moved to the Vitor Owaifo Creative Hub, where the governor resumed the call for the restitution of the artworks from other parts of the world. Governor Obasiki believed the return will give him for his assets and help for research purposes. How will these broad objects benefit the people of Edo and Nigeria? What research and education projects can come out of these returned artifacts? Would it mark the beginning of us trying to understand what these objects actually meant and mean to us. The Minister for Culture and Media explained that there is need for the artworks to be brought back to the country. Plundering and destroying cultural sites is a crime against humanity, a crime against that which should actually connect us, the human point in which everything is related to one another. With this engagement, stakeholders are expected to make input in different areas to enable the actualization of the project. Paul Ezenwa, TVC News, Benin.